Chapter 9 On the following day, many of those who were there for the Passover heard that Jesus would be entering Jerusalem. They took palm tree branches and went out to greet him as he entered, and shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus had sent two followers beforehand to get a young colt, and he entered Jerusalem riding on it. This was exactly what the prophet Zechariah foretold, Rejoice, daughter of Zion, shout out daughter of Jerusalem, Behold, your king comes to you, he is just and provides salvation, meekly riding upon a young colt. At the time this happened, the disciples did not recognize that it was fulfilling prophecy, but after Jesus rose from the dead, then the disciples remembered the prophecy and how it had been fulfilled at that moment. The people who had been present when Lazarus was raised from the dead had spread word all over Jerusalem, and the welcoming crowd knew about that miracle and welcomed him into the city. The leaders were upset and said to each other, No one is following our direction. This whole population have become his followers. In the crowd that gathered for the Passover, there were certain Greeks who went to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, Sir, would you introduce us to Jesus? Philip went to tell Andrew, and together they went to tell Jesus that people were eager to meet him. And Jesus responded, The time has arrived when the Son of Man will complete his journey. In the name of Father Amon, I tell you, except a kernel of wheat is buried in the ground, it remains but a seed, but if it is buried, it can spring to life and bear fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, but those willing to sacrifice their life in this world will obtain endless lives, worlds without end. If any man is loyal to me, let him follow me, and every upward step I achieve, there will my loyal followers join me. Any who are loyal to me, my father will approve. Now I confront the final trial on my path, and what should I say? Father, save me from the difficulties I now face, when this is the reason I have come into the world. Father, let all honor be given to you. Then a voice from heaven said, Everything you have done has honored me, and everything you will yet do will also honor me. The people nearby also heard the voice, but some thought it was thunder. Others thought an angel spoke to him. Jesus explained, You did not hear this voice for my benefit, but you heard it for your benefit. The time has come for me to complete the work required of me, to intercede for the world. And the accuser will lose all his power. Because of the sacrifice of his life that the Son of Man is to make, he will rise up and rescue all mankind. He said this to explain how important his death was to save others. The people who heard this asked him, When we consult the scriptures they claim that the Messiah will live forever. Why do you say the Son of Man must sacrifice his life? Who are you talking about? Then Jesus said to them, Only a little time remains for the light who is now here. Learn how to live while the light remains, otherwise darkness will overcome you. Without the light you will fall into error. While you are near the light, believe in the light, so that you can become the children of light. Jesus said this, abruptly departed, and then avoided them. Although he had done many miracles before them, they still did not comprehend that he was the Messiah, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah about the Messiah, who has believed our report. For whose benefit has the strength of the Lord been revealed? And Isaiah answered those questions by describing them. They will refuse to believe because Isaiah wrote, Make the heart of these people grow fat, dull their ears and shut their eyes, so they will not see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and repent, and be healed. Isaiah saw the Messiah's glory and prophesied of him. Despite conflicts, some of the Sanhedrin also secretly believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not admit their belief, fearing they would be ejected from the synagogue, for they valued the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus declared, He that believes on me, believes not just on me, but also on the one who sent me. What you see me do is what he that sent me has done before. 
I am here as the light of the world to enable anyone who believes on me to escape from the darkness. I do not judge those who hear my words, but do not believe, because I did not enter the world to now judge it, but to be its savior. But when you reject my message, beware, because the message I was sent by the Father to deliver will separate you in the last day. He will divide you based on your submission to, or rejection of, his message. He has sent me to guide you, and he guides into endless lives, worlds without end. My message, therefore, is the Father's.